Coming up, President Trump approves a disaster declaration for recent flooding. We will have more on what that means for you. One prominent lawmaker is calling for the legal age for buying cigarettes to be increased a couple of years. We will tell you how business owners are reacting to the proposal. And former Mayor Bill Morton was not the only prominent hazard citizen that died yesterday. We will remember Mary Dawhair as well. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It is 531 on this Friday. It is April the 19th. I am Will Puckett. You're watching Mountain News this morning and we appreciate it. It's going to be a soggy good Friday, so you're going to want the rain boots, an umbrella and a rain jacket as you head out to maybe a half day of work or maybe getting ready for your Easter activities or taking your kids to school. It's going to be a soggy one, but Brandon has good news. It's going to last for maybe one or two days, but Easter Mm -hmm. shaping up to be perfect, right, Brandon? Yeah, it looks like we're going to be in pretty good shape by the time we get to Sunday. We just got to get to Sunday first. Let's take a look at what's going on this morning. Last six hour loop, the cold front started to work its way into the mountains and it brought the heavier bands of rain with it. Those are ongoing this morning. So some water on the roads is a possibility. Be careful of that. Some fog starting to form as well. There's a live pinpoint Doppler radar. Anywhere you're seeing orange, yellow or dark green is heavy rain this morning. Temperatures continue to drop, especially out to the west, already in the 50s in Somerset and Williamsburg, 67 here in Hazard, almost 70 though in Logan. You can see where the cold front is still trying to pass through. 49 in Owensboro, 47 Paducah. So temperatures will continue to drop throughout the day. Midnight was our high point, and your 12-hour planner shows that going down slowly through the evening hours to about 59 by 7 o'clock. We'll eventually get down to the 40s overnight. I'll have the rest of your forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. We'll. Alrighty, Brandon, thank you. President Trump has made a declaration of disaster for the state of Kentucky. Road crews in more than 50 counties can expect federal assistance to help repair roads damaged by recent severe weather. Officials from District 12 Kentucky Transportation Cabinet estimate repair costs for their seven county districts sit at more than $11 million. The major break in the road along Kentucky 1103 in Letcher County is just one of several. Crews say extra money and helping hands from FEMA is greatly needed. I don't know, we're just, our budget's stressed out. We don't have enough men actually. And we just try to do what we can do. And when you know, FEMA steps in the, with contractors and stuff, we can get more done. Crews say they expect to have a better idea of how much the damage will cost once examiners assess the area in coming weeks. Crazy storms tore through the state of Mississippi Thursday. In some areas, winds reached up to 100 miles per hour. Possible tornadoes were reported around Jackson. Two cars in the parking lot of a Walmart in Clinton, Mississippi were flipped on their sides. An avalanche likely killed three experienced mountain climbers. The trio should have returned from the Banff National Park in Alberta, Canada yesterday. By Thursday, Outdoor Appear, outdoor appear Company, the North Apparel Company, the North Face, confirmed they are still missing and rescue crews do not believe they're still alive. American Jess Rocks Kelly and the two Austrians are part of the North Face's global athlete team. Due to rain and high winds, the area could experience more avalanches, so the search has been called off for the time being. Medical professionals, they often find themselves in life or death situations. Yesterday, some nursing students stepped out of the classroom and put their skills to the test. WMT's Hannah Reynolds shows us a mock emergency. Nursing students in Middlesboro used what they have learned in the classroom to prepare for real life emergencies. The scenario this year was a plane crash into our building right behind me. Every year, nursing students get an emergency scenario to collaborate on, but this was the first year they had to work on a mock plane crash. As you can imagine, this had the adrenaline pumping for students on the campus. When we got told it was an airplane crash, I was very excited. I was wanting to see all the action. But the scenario was that the crash occurred during classes. The reality is something that hit home to some of those acting in the mock disaster. They gave me a role to play and it was a mother of a 20 year old girl that's a student. I, when I was looking for her, I was thinking, I'm looking for this 20 year old kid. What if it was actually my son? My son's 20. Overall, the goal is to not only test the students' capabilities, but to teach them to work as a team, like they will do when they are nurses. 
The coordinator says that teamwork is something the nurses passed with flying colors. Um, the teamwork that we saw today, our captains, our students, even our emergency responders was amazing. Hoping to prepare their nurses for real life emergencies. In Middlesboro, Anna Reynolds, WYMT Mountain News. The mock disaster was part of the nursing students' last skills exams to pass the program. Well, the Martin County Rescue Squad was recently approved for an important grant. The grant is $50,000. However, before they receive it, the squad will need to, need to raise $15,000 themselves. Those who work for the Rescue Squad do not get paid. However, one day each month, they host roadblocks to take up money. Chief Rex Endicott says their trucks are getting old and it is important to keep their equipment working properly. Now the Mueller report is finally released to the public. It is about 450 pages long and parts of it are redacted. The report confirmed the Russian government was behind efforts to illegally interfere with the 2016 presidential election. It also did not find that the Trump campaign colluded in those schemes. Some lawmakers still want to see the full report along with all the underlying materials. Attorney General William Barr says he will allow leaders to see a less redacted version. He's scheduled for public testimony next month. Now there is plenty of reaction to this report, both from national politicians and those with Kentucky ties. Hillary Thornton explains what Senator Mitch McConnell and Congressman Andy Barr have to say about the report. Two of Kentucky's top Republicans in the bluegrass state as details of the Mueller report started coming in. This process that we've all heard about on a virtual daily basis uh, for two uh, long years. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell speaking at an event in Oldham County talking about his take on the integrity of Robert Mueller, Rod Rosenstein and William Barr. I don't want you to buy any notions that somehow any of these people are political hacks. They've never run for anything. They have sterling reputations. Meanwhile, Congressman Andy Barr stopping by WKYT for a taping of newsmakers with Bill Bryant explaining some of his takeaways of the report. He says the bottom line is it vindicates President Donald Trump showing no collusion between then candidate Trump and Russia. We've had 22 months. $25 million of, of uh, taxpayer money spent on this, 2,800 subpoenas, 500 witness interviews, 40 FBI agents, 19 lawyers, and zero evidence of collusion. It's time to move on, put to rest uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, effort to uh, vilify this administration. Congressman Barr also noting what he says was great transparency by the Trump administration in regards to the report. The president had the ability to invoke executive privilege uh, in addition to the redactions that, that were required by law that were included in today's release of the, of the report, and the president did not invoke that. Hillary Thornton, WYMT Mountain News. Now, by the age of 18, you're able to vote, serve your country, and buy a pack of cigarettes. But some of that could change. Kentucky Senator, Senior Senator Mitch McConnell is pushing for a new law. It would make it so you have to buy 20, you have to be 21 before you can buy any tobacco products. Tony Florence, he owns a chain of vape and tobacco stores across the Commonwealth. He does not think the senator's proposal would help much. How can you expect them to stop using them. You know, no one wants kids to use vaping products or cigarette products, but if you want to address this issue, it doesn't matter if it's T18 or T21 if you don't have better enforcement and better penalties. But Senator McConnell seems confident back in Washington they will back the bill. The bill would include an exemption for men and women serving in the United States military. It will be introduced next month. His office says similar laws have passed in 12 states. A beloved hazard woman has died. Mary Dawhair was 100 years young. She was born the same day World War I ended. She was one of 11 siblings in the well-known Dawhair family. She and her husband Ed ran the clothing store Tots and Teens for many years. Last year, when she hit the century mark, we asked her what her secret was for a long life. Work hard, serve the Lord, and love your family and friends. Well, I want to be remembered as a good Christian person, and I love most all the people that I need. 
Oh, what a sweetheart. We definitely send our sincerest condolences to the Daher family. Now, Maggard Funeral Home is handling the arrangements. Visitation will be from 2 to 4 p.m. on Monday at Maggard's Mountain View Chapel. A funeral will follow. Coming up, the Plugged In crew will take a look at one of the movies hitting the theater this weekend. It'll be a good weekend to stay in or at least do something indoor and watch that movie. And at least until Easter, I'll have the soggy forecast about three minutes.